Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, I've got a small offcut of pistachio here. Got some very nice colour. It's a very nice wood to work. I discovered for the first time the other day. Um, and so I'm hoping to get these two little bowls out of it, with which will have a white rim and a, uh, a darker pool of colour of uh, the heartwood in the bottom of the bowl. So this block is uh, 60 millimetres in that direction, which is uh, just under two and a half inches. And it is, I'm going to work in millimetres, much easier. Uh, it's 58 mil that way. Um, now I'd really like to have this colour in the bottom of the bowl. If I turn a bowl there, then it's going to be half black, half white, which uh, is not uh, really what I'm after. So I'm going to draw a line across here. And I'm just going to skew it slightly. Oops, there we are. And then draw that across there. So the bowl will pretty well have color where so that'll be the shape of the blank and then I'll do another one over this side um, real pity I hadn't thought about this before because I could probably have got an even wider block out of it but we'll go broadly and probably come down a little bit further into there bring that across so that this will be a much uh, kind of better bowl really to or uh, a better blank to play with I think I can cope with that <laughs> If you're buying a bandsaw, try and get one with a foot brake. It's much safer. So with blanks this size, um, I really have three options for initially mounting them. One would be between centers, uh, so I can get a little foot on the uh, piece. I could open these jaws right out and grip them there and then turn as much as I could to the outside without the jaws. But uh, what I have got is a little screw chuck, which I've made, which is basically a large old style wood screw um, poking out about half an inch. Uh, and so that's going into these jaws, which is what it was designed for. And then I make a hole in the middle here, which I'll do by eye, won't be too far off. And uh, then I use a good old fashioned kind of pump drill to make a hole in here. Oops. I haven't used this for years, but this is how I used to make holes for screws in the days of faceplates. Right, so that exposes the hole of the outside. Now this is just make the bowl exactly the same way, only it's all in miniature. Um, the chuck I have, this chuck, has jaws which will go down to that. So I've got to work with that to hold the bowl while I hollow it out. So one of the first thing you need to do is going to be to, uh, uh, to ascertain that diameter. This is a quarter inch spindle guard. Looking at cross grain here.
I've got several approaches to this too. Once I've got down to the right diameter, I can uh, actually put beads up the outside of a little bowl so I can grip one of those beads in the chuck. It's probably going to be my preferred way of doing it. There's a split just there, which is a bit of a nuisance. Um, so that definitely means that's what's happening on this bowl. Otherwise, I've got to ascertain the diameter now of the base. Or the, ba the diameter I can grip, which is there. That whipping sound is the split. Right, so that really isn't quite small enough that's, uh, uh, for a uh, finished foot, but um, I could grip that now and, uh, and rough the bowl, uh, turn the bowl from there, but I'd really rather get a shape here and then put some beads up the outside in this case, so we'll get rid of the split. any flat areas oh, there's a teeny split just there I really need to mark that so I know where to look for it Put a pencil line up on the top face oh, that's Oh, pity. Anyway, let's see what happens. so many other marks it looked like my pencil mark I think it's around there still a little flat area there so I'm just going to um, get a bit of a scraper so I know from the other day that this scrapes very nice as you can see just stroking the surface a bit more to come. Uh, I'm likely to be interacting with the jaws if I'm not careful so I'm just going to bring the rest up here, palm on the rest and just squeeze the tool into the cut. That's good. with a shear scrape. Now the chuck will grab anywhere around there. So what I'm going to do is to put some little, just a batch of grooves there. I'm going to do that with, uh, this is an 18 TPI thread chasing tool. So I've got the rest uh, just a shade so the tool when it's working horizontal is uh, it's going to be at about center height I'm going to come up into the cut from below Do another lot of those. Now I'd like to come up into the 
so those beads are almost proud um, that is going to be a little tricky to get at um, for a quarter inch spindle gouge again just try and take a little push cut just to take away up to the bottom of the bead and that seems to have done that now on the base use the wing of the tool just to flatten the rim and then I can take a little shear cut back into the middle that doesn't feel quite as good as I might have hoped so I'm just going to scrape that into the bottom of the round nose still doesn't feel that good right sand that little bit at the bottom uh, a bit of uh, 180 to start with the yellow stuff Very tempting not to sand this at all, it's so nice off the tool. And then uh, there's a little bit of 240. When I come to turn this round into the chuck, I'm going to uh, I have to guard that with uh, with plastic, just so the, uh, the wood doesn't, or the metal doesn't stain the wood. That's going to kind of drop the abrasive on top of that, but the chuck should be able to grip on one of those beads. This is green wood, this was growing only about three weeks ago. People always wonder if these little screws will grip. <laughs> it's all I can do to get the thing off. Right, in case those other beads are too fine, oh, and this one's got a broader foot anyway, so it's uh, better. So. Three at spindle guard. flat area to come off yet feels good just establish the chuck diameter first just in case I've got enough flat uh, something I can work with. Let's see what we've got. Well, that's almost 
round. So if I take a teeny bit off the bottom, um, I can have a foot that diameter. Can be my foot. And have a little angle in here. And now it shear scrapes nicely, so might as well do it that way. teeny bit missing up there still, a little teeny little flat area. foot is in danger of being too small. I think I'm just going to round that. Maybe bring the top in just a little bit. Put a bit of decoration on the bottom. Now, the 240 grit will take care of that. The wood is still a bit damp. Uh, it's winter in Australia at the moment, so when this was cut down, the sap wasn't rising, so the tree wasn't soaking wet as it would have been in high summer. This is green timber, so I'm not going to uh, finish it yet. Put, no, put a finish on when it dries out. Now, the moment of truth. Double layer of plastic. Probably the plastic just kicking it out a bit somewhere. So I can see where it's coming up a bit there, just knock it back in. Right, so this can happen when you've got something which is running slightly out of whack. 
Oh, didn't true the top particularly well. We'll get that done first. If it's running slightly out of whack, all you need to do is just true the rim. So it's slightly out a bit further down. Unless somebody's going over this with a micrometer, you're really not going to realise that there's a difference in the wall thickness. If somebody does go over it with a micrometer, they're really not worth bothering about as people, I think. So, that's the little black mark there left over from, <coughs> oh, I think a salt scoop. means I think it's 20 millimetres deep. Quarter inch deep fluted bowl gouge. This is the quarter inch, quarter inch flute. Fortunately it landed on the handle. Let's see if you can see. coming through A one inch round nose, asymmetric round nose, 45 degree bevel, thereabouts. under my forearm so it's inclined to snatch and at least I can absorb it. There's a kind of cone in the middle. Almost have left that in as a decorative feature. Like the rest just a shade low. I want the tool tilted down when it's working at centre. hard. I 
And the response to all those people who are wondering why I'm not using a negative rate scraper, you don't need them. All you need to do is raise the rest to make sure the tool's pitched down very slightly. I always think uh, negative rate scraper is a waste of a good scraper. Right, into there. Have my little rant about scrapers. So, this is the 180 grit. If there are any little kind of ridges in there, that should get rid of them. Two forty grits. one. I probably will oil that in a minute. In fact, I won't oil it now. When I can see my oil. Sock, which has so that's boiled linseed oil, and uh, the rag, the sock has some beeswax in it. Uh, one layer of uh, this should do, I think. That needs a little, a little hole cut in it. So I'm going to do this off camera, just cutting a small cross in the middle of the plastic. So the end of that can poke through. So it's then a question of holding that steadily. In the jaws grip. That's not a thing you can do with a lot of chucks. If the chuck has uh, any kind of chamfer on the uh, on the inner lip, you can't do this. Uh, anything with those huge teeth, can't do it. So I can see the shadow down the inside and uh, got the wrong tool. This is the eighth inch depth gouge. So I'm going to the marks just above the black line. went too hard. It was a good thing to see what can go wrong. Open it up and start all over again. Oops, not that one. Where were we? In there somewhere. Can't see which ones, so it's not damaged. Come up a bit.
Right, back in with the depth drop. Pretty well there, it's good. bit thinner. Yellow 180 grit. And you can't tell, or at least I can't tell, where the chuck was holding. But in order to do that, you do need a chuck with a nice crisp inner lip on the jaws. Right, I'll have a look at those. <laughs> 